Hi, this time I'm coming at you from my 1960 DeSoto. This was my dream car for a very long time. I grew up in Hungary and when I was there I bought one of these, but that was a real piece of junk. It had no uh, windshield, no seats, and it was totally rusted. But nonetheless, I started to fix it up. I don't know what I was thinking. There were no parts whatsoever, but uh, when I left Hungary, I sold it. And unfortunately, somebody who bought it, they cut it into two pieces. The front part uh, went outside of a burger joint and the inside was uh, basically, they removed the top and put some chairs in it and, uh, and, and a table, just like in a movie Pulp Fiction. And you was able to sit in the car and then order lunch from the car. This was back in the mid 90s. That was a very long time ago. And then uh, when I came to the US, every time I seen the Hemmings Motor News, I always opened it up and went to the letter D and looked at these sorrows for sale. But I never could find one which was uh, not overly expensive or not rotten to dust. So this one came up a couple of years ago. And first, it, they asked uh, like a lot of money for it. I think it was 65000 at first. And then uh, they were trying to sell it for a whole year, I, I believe. And then finally, it, uh, the price actually lowered. So I was, I was able to uh, uh, try or attempt to buy it. So I drove over to uh, Tacoma, Washington. And there was a really nice looking workshop there where they worked only on Chrysler vehicles. And since uh, this auto was owned by Chrysler, this was fit right into his... Uh, uh, line of uh, work and then uh, we were able to agree on a price and finally got on my trailer and I brought it back uh, whatever he'd done on the car it was perfect absolutely perfect and it still works he rebuilt the brakes he fixed some of the windows the power windows and uh, put a new exhaust system on it and then uh, practically brought it back to life and then uh, the car is, is running fine I still had to do some more repair on it which came up uh, since then and uh, more specifically, I, I fixed up the seats. Some of the seat upholstery was pro provided by the uh, seller, but uh, it was not enough. So I had to buy a whole bunch more for it. And they were uh, different. Uh, obviously, you can see I had to buy three different upholstery materials from SMS Fabrics. And then I uh, took it to a Las Vegas shop where they uh, finished it. It was a long battle to uh, get it done because it's a very complicated thing. More specifically, because it's got an, a power and a swivel seat in it. This car is actually a pre-production vehicle. It was built in 1959, and they built it for uh, uh, to showcase it in the local uh, dealers. So this car went to Tacoma, Tacoma, Washington, and then uh, they showcased it. That uh, they showed the uh, the dealers what's the 1960 model you're gonna look like in the DeSoto lineup. There was also another car. It was a regular, well, regular Chrysler, which was also showcased. And then uh, after that, the car probably got purchased by somebody from the dealership or somewhere around and then they uh, they ended up in a barn somewhere in Washington state and that's where it sat for a long time. This one has a rear window defroster and the rear window defroster is a, a switch over here that's mostly the production vehicles did not have that but there was a ton of different options which you were able to purchase for this car like air conditioning when you had uh, two chimney came out from here it was a little bit wider i believe and there was two little chimney came out of here and it was a quite an effective uh, system actually worked really well and then uh it had autopilot there was a cruise control on the side here which you can actually adjust it from here unfortunately this one does not have that but it has power windows i think needs a little lubrication and on the back uh, there's the other one that goes down the interesting part in it if you roll it up and you don't roll it up all the way so if I pull it up, there's a little gap. You can make a little gap to pull the smoke out from your cabin. That's just a little smoke puller. So if you can just, if you go in a cold day or something, you pull it down a little bit, it provides uh, sufficient ventilation to pull all the smoke out. I mean, I'm not smoking anymore, although I have a nice uh, cigar here. <laughs> but uh, since I had a pulmonary embolism, I'm not really smoking any cigars, but it looks great on the dash. Unfortunately, the speedometer doesn't work. And I'll show you guys why in a little bit. To me, this car looks very futuristic. It's got push button transmissions, just like in a spaceship would have. And then this is where you can adjust the air. If you push this one, this actually opens up the air. It's a vacuum switch is also mechanical and vacuum altogether. And you, you can open up the air for the foot and you got a defrost setting and then a high fan, low fan and an off. Also, you can adjust the, the heat with this. That's, that's also a complicated piece of machinery, but somebody was able to rebuild for me. 
because if it start leaking it will end up all the water end up on the floor there i was able to fix the uh, clock the clock actually wind itself up uh, by an electromagnet and then it runs i was able to fix the temperature gauge and the fuel gauge which, which was also a nice uh, battle this is a adjustable mirror so if you look at the mirror you can adjust it from the inside um, you can do a larger adjustments outside and then the minor adjustments here you can also see that there is no park in the in here so the reason why because what they thought so when you put the your car transmission into a park position there's a lock what goes down onto the drive shaft and it prevents the car from moving this car has an actual drum behind the transmission which you can activate with the pedal and then when you want to go you basically release that with this lever here it's the parking brake release and then the car start moving if you want to stop you have to step on the parking brake again to stop the car from moving anywhere and that's basically the park the problem comes when the uh, output shaft seal start leaking and then it all goes on to the drum and then the car rolls because <laughs> it doesn't have enough friction left in it i tried to fix this uh glove compartment the problem is they keep sending me the chrysler glove compartment uh setup inside and that's not the desoto one so i i have to send it back and try to fix it again now we're gonna get out from this uh spaceship and i'm gonna show you guys the swivel seat so the idea is if you are a let's say you are a lady and then you have like a mini skirt on and I promise I'm not going to demonstrate that for you right now um, when she wants to get in she doesn't have to spread her legs because this car has the swiveling part so basically you can sit in the vehicle and move it back and you don't have to spread your legs it's basically help you get in this is has an elaborate cable setup that comes out here and it's supposed to be like a torque tube over here and all this stuff the torque tube broke a long time ago so um, technically when you open the door it's supposed to automatically open up for you to ease the get in part but uh, unfortunately that part is not uh, there anymore so it's a lot easier to and I probably not wouldn't use it all the time either so a lot easier to just use this little uh, lock device the car also has an electric power seat and it's actually able to move the whole bench so it can go up and down and then you can tilt the whole thing so with this little thing you can move it up and down and it works it was a lot of effort to make it happen but now it's working again so it's pretty cool there's an original sticker on it from shell whatever left of it so this part is the original color this been uh, just uh, over painted once the car looks really great from the outside doesn't look all that good when you go close to it so it's a good 15 foot car for now but i really like it because it's drivable and usable well, let's look under the hood this car got a 318 under it and uh it's just a regular plain jane engine they had some super engines in it uh with the uh, cross flow carburetors i don't know if i say the right word where the carburetor is way out on the side and then they were going in from the side I bought a nice uh, restoration battery from the classic battery place and then uh, it's got the uh, original generator and it just runs great what I really like in this is uh, this harmonica you can still buy this rubber by the way so when you press on the brake it actually moves like a harmonica it's absolutely crazy I had a lot of fight with it in uh, Las Vegas because it was keep overheating so finally I was able to buy a high flow uh, water pump this whole casing is new that the modern high flow setup for uh, other 318 engines and finally when they clean the radiator very well that's really fixed the problem so but then now we live in kentucky so i don't really need that anymore so i, I it, it's I, I can drive it in any kind of uh, 100 degree weather here and then it's not overheating it works really well i also added a transmission cooler for it just to make sure that transmission will stay alive in the heat the cars which are equipped with an AC has a gigantic compressor just about here it's like a two-cylinder compressor and then they have a lot of setup here um, but since it's a pre-production car I really don't want to change from its original setup so I think I'm just gonna forfeit from the idea of converting this to a to an uh, AC car but you can see the heater valve here 
and finally I was able to send it out and someone rebuilt it and since then it's not leaking. It has torsion springs on the front so just like in some French car you gotta get a torsion bar going uh, from the uh, lower arm all the way into next to the transmission mount and uh, it's actually uh, torques that tube and that's how the uh, suspension works. They thought it's gonna be a lot more uh, stable and a lot, lot, lot better ride which is uh, it is a smooth ride and on the back uh, it has two leaf springs on the back. I think this car has some beautiful lines, a real angry face on the front. They're like, hey, I'm going to come and bite you. Uh, sort of look like a mouth at the, at the front part. And then, of course, you had the regulation uh, dual headlamps. As you're coming forward, you got this nice uh, chrome piece on the top. I was able to find new old stock mirrors. So I can change these once the car is going to be restored. But I'm not really sure if I'm ever going to get to it or ever want to get into that because that's going to be a lot of effort I don't really want to put in right now. If you go forward the uh, the fin actually starts at the door and it's just it's just great when I watch this car it's always really really having a, a nice time uh, touching it and then see how is this nice uh, line continues all the way to the back and ends up in this beautiful tail light. So on the pre-production models they uh, didn't they had a really sharp edge here that really sharp edge actually bit me a few times in the garage, but uh, when I look at this nice taillight, I just can't be mad at this car. So, so it was the adventure one. There was so, so, so many different cars. They didn't make too many cars. Maybe uh, just about mid-2000s, what they made from the DeSotos in 1960. At the end of the year, actually, they stopped the manufacturing. So the last model year was the uh, 1961 DeSotos. So this one, uh, this brand, is no more a long time ago they finished uh, making it there were some aftermarket windshields what they did for a while which they were totally flat this one actually has the original one which has a little nice curvature in it as i heard i think maybe in sweden they started to remanufacture these windshields properly so from them now it's actually available but i think it's close to two thousand dollars now with this uh, front windshield cost if it breaks this car is not perfect by any means but even though uh, it has all kind of blemishes and then uh, all kind of mechanical issues. I, I still really like it. It's, it starts every time I try to go anywhere and it stops and does its job. So I'm really, really liking this car. It's sort of like a dream for me to have this car. My immediate plans are with this car to rebuild the front end and then to uh, fix the transmission problem with it where the uh, speedometer cable is uh, not really turning the the cable itself. Well, let's go to the garage and I'll show you what I mean. So here's the garage and I have this part for a while now and I really need to, I need to install it. So this is the end of the uh, transmission here and you can see the, the little, uh, the big hole on the side. Oh, if I hold it, this, the problem is that this hole on my transmission where the uh, speedometer cable comes out it's actually a little bit to the back or a little bit to the front one of the other so I got a wrong casing what someone put on the transmission when they rebuilt it this is the setup this is the output shaft uh, seal what sometimes leaks and then this uh, drum setup goes over here on what it. you see here is a Chevrolet van it has the engine on the back it's an air-cooled uh, air-cooled Chevy six-cylinder boxer six then I got a Bug Eye Sprite here and a 3000 and an East German Wartburg on the right. And I'm working on this Trabant engine. We'll have a video of that shortly. And this is the Trabant where the engine is out of. This, uh, my friend Jan Erik from Berlin, he took this car around the US and then went about uh, 5,000 miles with it, I believe. And then the engine is in a, in, a, in a poor condition right now because I don't know what happened to it. So I'm trying to figure it out at the moment. So I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is and I'm going to drive it. Whatever breaks on it will fix it to make it usable. And then uh, if I have nothing better to do one day, I'm probably I'm going to get to it and then uh, get it done. But until then, I'm just going to drive it. Thanks for watching and uh, see you guys next Friday with something else. Bye. <laughs>